day, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Paula is away at a wedding in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and our regular super sub, Gavin Radford, is on a golfing tour of Dubai. So enjoy it, boys. Joining me surely will be our regular UK correspondent, Stevie Brown, from his Fulham studio. But we kick off, as always, with our post-net last one-standing competition. And heading into race, uh, week eight, apologies, we had 19 entries. Unbelievably, all were successful. Nine squeaked through when Brentford scored late to beat Notts Forest. Brighton cruised, six guys on Brighton. One on Man City, one on Crystal Palace, one on Newcastle, and one on Liverpool, who I still can't believe scored an injury time against Spurs. The guys that went through, we have two ladies, namely Sue Miller and Tennille Werners. Three former champions still going strong. Ernie Wallace... Hassan Mall and Sean Phillips. Our leading internationals are Kevin Power from the UK and Francois Dumy from Mauritius, while our other guys that have sailed through. Mark Jackson, Colin McCabe, Gary Grant, Craig Faree, Mark Curry, Sawa Khan, Tay Stadler, James Goodman, Robbie Burns and Andre van Bussen. And our new toad favourite with two picks is Mark Weinstein. Guys, there are games on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I will send you your picks later on this afternoon. Get studying. We now cross over to our UK man, Stevie Braham. Steve, good morning. Good morning, Bart. Uh, we'll talk about the games first, but uh, Chelsea, what's going on with Frank Lampard? Is he going to stay on for the end of the season? I suspect, unless... Uh Chelsea have done a deal with Pochettino to bring it in sooner. Yeah. You know, the season's running out. They've only got a handful of games left. You know, so, and, and we finish on the, the last weekend of Mar uh, May. So, you know, he may well do, but it's, you know, six defeats in a row. It's not looking very good for, for him uh, as far as his reputation is concerned. Yeah. You know, they bucked up a little bit in the second half, but the first half they were shambles again. It's, yeah. uh, it doesn't seem to matter what, what 11 they put out on the pitch. They're just not playing as a team. Yeah. You know, we listened to Emmanuel Petit, who played for both Arsenal and Chelsea, and he was sitting behind the Chelsea dugout. And he said the arguments between the players and the bickering was frightening. And he said it doesn't matter who you put in charge of Chelsea, they're going nowhere. And uh, as far as Frank Lampard's reputation, I think that's 17 defeats out of the last 20 with him being in charge of the Premier League, Steve. That's not, uh, that's not good. No, definitely. I think that uh, you know he might look back on this and, and regret uh, you know taking taking it up because you know he makes excuses, he's making excuses, or, yeah. or then just coming out and saying, "Oh, it's not good enough, it's not acceptable." Well, everyone knows that, but do something about it. Yeah. You know, I'm saying, if you look at their fixtures, they've got one or two that uh, they might they look at and think, "Actually, we can come back and get a result." But you, you think that they're away at Bournemouth; it's the sort of game that they should go and win. But the way Bournemouth have been playing recently, yeah. and the way Chelsea have been playing. You, know, you can see why Bournemouth could be uh, favourites in that. Yeah, no doubt. Liverpool won Fulham nil. Steve, I watched most of it. I thought your boys, you know, second half played well, but what Diop was doing, trying to play out from the back. You know, my brother in America, Ian, we were liaised, talking, messaging, and he's, he just, he's had enough of Liverpool. He said too many old players, too many young players that aren't good enough at the moment. You know, but uh, if Diop hadn't have given that penalty, Steve, there could have been an upset. How did you see it? Yeah, look, I mean, it was a clumsy challenge. He waited far too long. Yeah. I mean, he should have attacked the ball and got rid of it. Uh, but Nunes certainly made, uh, when, when you look at it, uh, again, I've looked at it several times, yeah. and the pundits have obviously commented that, you know, the letter of the law, it was a pen, but Nunes sort of threw himself over uh, yeah. over his over his leg. He wasn't going anywhere, but, you know, that was the difference. And ultimately, but uh, I was surprised as the game wore on, you know, we brought some subs on and we actually looked uh, as dangerous as, uh, as, as yeah. they did. And it seemed like, you know, Klopp was quite happy just to keep it tight and to keep that clean sheet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we certainly we certainly weren't disgraced. I mean, I think, you know, at one point, very early on when Liverpool were putting pressure on, I thought, oh, well, this could be a bit like the uh, the Tottenham game when they scored, they scored goals early. So, yeah. look, we, we were without key players. Obviously, you can't make excuses, but it does show... Our squad is is not as, uh, no, it's not as strong deep, yeah. as you know as as you know as, as we need. So yeah. uh, I hope, but I think Marco Silva, you know, won't be too despondent with the way that we've played recently. Yeah. Talking to Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp. What is the story with uh, his suspension? 
Yeah, I think that will happen. I mean, it's, uh, you know, again, if, if, if he got booked, but, you know, obviously it's all the post-match comments and uh, I think that something will happen there. You know, but if they suspension, it just means he'll sit up in the stand. Yeah. You know, they still make contact. It's not as if uh, there's no contact with the, with the team or, or his assistant. So it, it's just the fact that he just, unfortunately, he just seems to be under a bit of pressure to this season, Klopp. Yeah. And, and it, you know, this is the way that it, it sort of comes out. It sort of manifests itself. Yeah, I'm as a neutral. I used to love listening to him. But the way his actions are on the bench, running up to the fourth official, if he'd run down the sideline again, I'd have accept, accepted that, Steve. But the way he ran to the fourth official... Now, he's definitely losing the plot. One team who aren't losing the plot to Man City. I didn't watch much of it. I saw the goals are turned over. Haaland unstoppable at the moment, Steve. Yeah, unbelievable. As it happened, the first half was uh, was not the easiest watch. They uh, West Ham put sort of 10 men behind the ball. It just made it very difficult for City. They had one or two chances. Yeah. But once the first goal went in, then there was yeah. there was no, no doubt what was going to happen. And Haaland, I mean, it's just un- unbelievable. 51 goals... Uh, in all competitions, 35 now in the Premier League, which is a record. Yeah. Uh, obviously beats uh, sort of Shearer and Cole. And the truth, he's done it with sort of games to spare. Yeah. You know, it, we're now looking, he's now uh, behind Dixie Dean as the uh, second highest goal scorer in, in the top league in, in all competitions. And we're looking at 100 years. Yeah. Uh, he needs 12 goals in the last nine games to equal Dixie Dean, which oh. is the sort of record that you never dreamt anybody could get close to. Yeah. You know, it might be he never does this again. But, uh, you know, it's an incredible first season and you just, all those people that doubted whether or not he was the right player and whether it would, uh, especially when they lost one or two games earlier in the season, you thought, is this affecting the way City play? Well, I think he's answered it, you know, 51 times. Yeah, especially the Champions League. I've got Liverpool mates. I think the game was played at uh, Leicester when uh, Liverpool beat them and they were saying, hey, it doesn't look too good, but... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tried to sign him when he took over at United and he said he's top notch so those guys at Old Trafford must be puking. Steve, big game tonight for Man United at Brighton. I don't fancy United here but how do you see it going? Well, you know, with Liverpool now winning five in a row, yeah. although they've played more games, they are only four points behind so, yeah. you know, United don't want to start slipping up uh, at this late stage. You know, they I didn't see it all. I saw highlights. I thought they played quite well last weekend. Yeah. Brighton were exceptional, considering that uh, you know everything that happened to them in, in, on the penalty shootout, and then losing at Forest, they looked fairly fairly jaded. But they came back with a rotated team and absolutely not annihilated uh, Wolves at the weekend. Yeah. I think they'll be up for it, Brighton. You know they're going to fancy that they still have a shout uh, and, and a well placed for European football. And I think this is a huge game. Now last season. United were totally embarrassed down at Brighton. I can't believe they're going to they're going to want to go through that experience again. I think you know United are capable of getting a result there. You know, wouldn't surprise me if if it ends all square. But Brighton are going to have a real go. They're playing some lovely football at the moment. Yeah, what was interesting when they played Wolves, Cachado and and all these top players. Matoma was on the bench and the Argentinian. So it'd be interesting to see if they start tonight. But I think they will. But. I think the key is going to be if Juan Bissaka can contain Matomo again, like he did in the semi-final. But, uh, you know, to me, I fancy Brighton, sad to say. Steve, Sam Allardyce, big Sam, takes yeah, over Leeds well, United. Well, well, you know, a great press interview uh, yesterday when he basically uh, said that, uh, you know, comparing himself to sort of Pep and Klopp and Arteta, uh, not not saying he's better, but said he, you know, essentially got more experience than them. And then Pep was asked about it and he agreed. He said, yeah, he has got more experience. But look, it, it, it may well be too little too late. He's got nothing to lose. He's yeah. been out of football a couple of years. Uh, my understanding is it's a half a million pounds, but if he keeps them up, it's it's a two and a half million pound bonus, yeah. which is not bad work for four games. But when you look at their fixtures, obviously, uh, you know, City away on Saturday afternoon, you know, if they got anything at all there, would be a miracle. But you never know, you know, they, he might sort of somehow get the players believing themselves. I can't think they'll go there and play sort of with a sort of cavalier style, but uh, hmm. which is, is how they sort of you know went about it under Bielsa. But you know, I think that uh, City really can't afford. They're not going to want to drop points. They, they've yeah. got themselves top of the table. They'll go four clear with a win on Saturday. I think that uh, he'll put out a strong side, Pep, and 
Sam will only have three games left to save the save, uh, leads. <laughs> Steve, the latest with Tottenham. I see Zabi Alonso's now being, well, not quoted, but uh, mentioned. Surely they've just got to keep it quiet till the end of the season. But newspapers obviously want to write about something. Who else is going to be mentioned in that job application? Well, look, I think the thing is, I mean, that came out of left field. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a number. There's no point in them making a change at this stage. And obviously, they're going to want to get somebody in place right at the beginning of the, of the season. But mm -hmm. it's going to be hard. You know, they've had some big names there who have just not done it and have not left, you know, not done well at all. Sort of Mourinho and, and Conte, you know, they're now looking at the sort of Xavi Alonso and, and Nagelsmann, you know, younger managers, but probably in the level below that. Yeah. So obviously the structure of the club has to change and as much as the manager comes in and, and, and they're not going to want to just be told by uh, Daniel Levy or, or whoever uh, to say, right, these are the players we're getting for you. Here we are. You know, get on with it. You know, I think a strong, a strong-willed, experienced manager is going to want to have have input and be able yeah. to say, "Look, I don't like what I've seen. We've got to change the way we play. We and the players you've given me are not the ones I need." So, you know, I think the Spurs are going to have to have a bit of a clear out uh, in the summer if they want to start challenging again. Yeah, I think they've got to go back to an English manager, Brendan Rodgers. I'm a Graham Potter lover. I think he's top notch. You know, all these guys are unproven. They've had the proven guys like. Mourinho and Conte, but they want to rule it with an iron fist. And with Levy there, it couldn't work. Go and I know Paul likes Brendan Rodgers. He's good. He knows how to play football. His teams play good football. But I'm a Graham Potter man. If it was me, that would be the way I would go. And last but not least, I see Lionel Messi fall out with PSG. Yeah, I mean, look, you can, I think they, they've obviously made their minds up that they weren't going to offer him a new contract. And he basically just against their uh, wishes he went off uh, to do some uh, promotional work in Saudi Arabia uh, and has, um, on, on his return he's been fined suspended of, he's been fined two weeks money and uh, you know where he goes next look you know he's got offers to go to uh, to the MLS he's got offers to go to Saudi Arabia yeah. my understanding is that he still wants to play in Europe but again he'd have to sort of lower his expectations because you know, maybe Barcelona. People, no club in Europe is going to pay him the sort of money that he's been on before. No. Uh, not, not now, not, not at his age, even though, you know, obviously you know, he can attract, uh, you know, a lot of people to the club and merchandise. But, um, you know, that sort of behaviour doesn't doesn't look good. Yeah. And I think PSG have decided, uh, you know, enough with these Galacticos. Yeah, you know, they've struggled tough. this season. You know, they're, they're winning. They're going to win Liga, Liga but only just in the end and obviously fell out, crashed out of the Champions League so mm. apart from Mbappe they're quite happy to get rid of uh, Neymar and uh, Messi now yeah don't blame them if I was Lionel Messi I'd go back to Barcelona do a pay deal that's where you started and that's where he should end Steve on to the weekend massive weekend uh, in the Premiership only four rounds left and uh, the first came up we mentioned it earlier Bournemouth versus Chelsea this has upset written all over it. Do you agree? Well, uh, you know, here, here you are. You find the sort of Bournemouth 11 on points with Chelsea now. I mean, literally, I mean, six wins in sort of eight, eight games, is it, or nine games? I mean, they've really yeah. uh, put a great run together. Look, it could be. I mean, you, you just, you don't know what you're going to get with Chelsea. You don't know what 11 he's going to put on the pitch. He, he, he thought that uh, he could give a Bamiyang a, a run out, yeah. having not started since November. Uh, and hooked him off at half time. He, he barely, they said he had nine touches of the ball, four of which were from kickoffs. <laughs> uh, so I'm not, sh I'm not sure that worked. Yeah. But look, you know, you look at the players and you just think, why is this? You know, this is there is something obviously fundamentally wrong there. Bournemouth are playing, you know, way above the sum of all their parts. I mean, they they, they look they look a cohesive unit and they're having a go and they deservedly have stayed up. Yeah. So I, I think this could be, uh, you know, this could be more pain for Frank. Yeah, I think so too. You know what amazed me, Steve, was you know, having a look at Odegaard's goals. The defensive effort from those Chelsea players to close them down. They were just zonal marking. Oh, well, you'll do it. No, I'll do it. And they were embarrassing. And Bournemouth, they won four of the last five. So it wouldn't shock me. You know, it does look a tight little pitch. And it wouldn't shock me if, uh, if Chelsea don't, don't, don't get beat again. They haven't won in seven. And it wouldn't surprise me if they have no wins in eight. Man City leads, Steve. You know, to me, I looked at, I've had a look at every avenue to try and make money. And the best I came up with was over two and a half goals, 
and both teams to score, no. I think uh, Big Sam's going to park the bus. He'll take a 2-0 defeat for goal difference. But I think City are going to go 2 3 nil up early and then take their main boys off because they've got the Champions League in midweek. Do you, how would you see that yeah. game going? Yeah, I'm, and that's, that's Pep's tactics. Yeah. You know, he does what you know, we discussed that other teams don't do, yeah. is play your strongest 11 that you're going to put out. And, and then, you know, once you're ahead, like he's done with Haaland. Look, Haaland could have had more than 51 goals this yeah. season. Because in, 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 number, in a lot of games, he takes him off with 15, 20 minutes to go when they're clear. Yeah. Uh, you know, which has worked because it's kept him fresh. Um, you know, and I think uh, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't do similar. Uh, yeah. We don't know about whether De Bruyne is going to be fit. Uh, I suspect he won't risk it. No, whatever he happens, him. he'll keep him. He'll keep him for Madrid. But uh, whatever other eleven he puts out, you would expect to be too strong for Leeds. Uh, and I think the worry for Leeds is obviously if they do give away early goals, is you know whether they crumple. But I'm not sure City uh, are going to want to expend any more energy than they need to. So yeah. as you say, you know two or three nil something or two or three one. It, 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 as long, as long as they get the point City, I think Pep will be pleased. Yeah, I think defensively, though, remember they had uh, against Leicester City with 3 0 up and cruising, and they conceded, and they could have conceded a few more. So I don't see Leeds scoring. I just think they'll try and keep it down. Our next game, Steve, Tottenham Crystal Palace. What can we say about Spurs? Well, look, I mean, it's uh, the first half. Uh, the first sort of half of the half at uh, Liverpool was uh, again was shocking it was a bit like the Newcastle game they actually played well in the second half yeah. and had a real go and, and ultimately if it wasn't for that Moura mistake would have come away with a point so yeah. they'll be smarting I think they may well get back with a win but when you look at the league table now uh, basically fourth place has gone for them yeah. so you know they're playing they're playing for Europa place at best um I think the fans are going to demand a bit more effort than they've seen. And again, you know, they've got to put in a first half performance. They against United, you know, they were out of you know, United should have been out of sight in that yeah. game in the first half. But uh, Tottenham came back. Palace will have a go. They've got nothing to lose. They're safe. So I think it'll be an entertaining game. I think that Tottenham would just edge it though. Yeah, 15 goals conceded in the last four league games, Spurs. So you don't know what's going on at the training pitch. Next game, Birmingham Derby, Steve, Wolves versus Aston Villa. This is going to be fiery. Yeah. I fancy Villa of the two teams, but how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, Villa, I think, was starters' favourites. It wasn't the best performance uh, last weekend. And Wolves, you know, Lepertic, Lepertudri would be very upset with the way they uh, defended yeah. at Brighton. They were you know, completely steamrolled. And I think he'll demand a response. I think this will be close, as you say, it's... Uh, it's a, sort of a, a Birmingham Black Country derby. Yeah. I think that I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Wolves hold them. I, I don't think there'll be a lot of goals. Uh, I think of the two, if there was to be a winner, probably Villa. But I, I could see a draw here. Do you? I just think there will be goals, Steve. I think, you know, with Aston Villa, they're trying to get into Europe. And after that debacle, 6-0, six, six you know, I watched the first 15 minutes because the guys were in the competition. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. You know, I just think that, uh, you know, Wolves, they, they, they've got a great home record. You know, the only team that's beat them, ironically, at Leeds in the last five. So, uh, yeah, I know it'll be tight. I think bookings is the way to go. But, uh, yeah, I fancy Villa the two teams. Steve, my upset of the Premiership this week is Brentford to avoid defeat at Liverpool. Am I crazy? Well, look, Brentford have uh, just picked up a couple of wins. Obviously, they, uh, you know, it looked at... You know, until the last uh, 10, 15 minutes, they might uh, come unstuck against Forrest. But you know, with Ivan Tony in the team, you know, there's a, he's got a there's a goal in him. You know, Liverpool got five wins in a row. I think they're going to. I personally, I think they're going to start as favourites. Yeah. You know, Klopp is going to is going to he's going to want to get another three points to keep pressure on on the, on the teams above them. Um, I'm not sure Brentford could, personally will get a result, but you never know. You know, Liverpool can see goals. I think Klopp was. Uh, when he was being interviewed, was was quite pleased that they kept a clean sheet. And the one thing Brentford do is is have a go away from home. I think it'll be close, but I just fancy Liverpool to sneak in though. Yeah, they're just defensively well organised, Brentford, and you know, they beat Man City away. And tactically, I like that manager. They do have a a great repertoire repertoire between the players and. You know, I don't like what I see from Liverpool. They're cruising. Guys are going through the motions. Trent Alexander on easy street. Obviously, he's brilliant on the ball, but this is a hard-working team, and the longer it stays close, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Birmingham can cause an upset like they did at uh, the Etihad earlier on in the year. 
Big game in the Premiership. First, uh, sorry, second versus third now is Newcastle Arsenal. Steve, how do you see it going? Yeah, I mean this is a tough game for Arsenal. Yeah. You know, they uh, obviously, you know, they needed that win the other night after sort of four without. But Newcastle are going to want to consolidate uh, their sort of top four position. And I think you know, if City win as we expect to go four clear of Arsenal, it really puts the pressure on them. And if they drop any points at all, you can't see anything other than City uh, winning that league now. Yeah. I think Arsenal are going to have to really be at their at their um, sort of early season best to get anything uh, at the, the, the weekend. You know, Newcastle will have a real go. The crowd are passionate. You know, they're, they're, they're playing well, scoring goals. And I think that uh, if Arsenal get anything at all, I think, you know, I've yeah. just got this horrible sneaking feeling that uh, they'll come unstuck Arsenal. They could get a point. I just can't see them winning somehow. Yeah, I just think it's going to be cagey early on, Steve. You know, Arsenal are going to try and sit, catch him on the break with Saka. But Gabriel Jesus hasn't got uh, the spark that he had at the beginning of the year. I worry about Newcastle's back four. I watched them against Villa. I know it was an early kickoff, but they got roasted. No other teams really put them under pressure. Southampton had a go and got behind them easily. This Arsenal team, I wouldn't write them off, Steve. I think, uh, I know they're second top and they're having a bad run, but I think they can expose Newcastle. I think there's goals, especially in the second half. I took 16 to 10, both teams to score in the second half. I think it's going to be catted mass early on. Hope I'm wrong, but uh, I think it's going to be tight early and explode in the second half because especially Arsenal have got to go for it. West Ham, yeah. Right. Arsenal do have to go for it, but I think they're, you know, that their poor run has, has actually coincided with losing Saliba. Yes. And at the back, that, that's, been, that's been part of the issue. So, um, you know, whether he changes it, he obviously gave someone their debut the other night, Kiora. Yeah. Whether he brings Holding in, you know, Gabriel was, uh, you know, possibly could have picked up a bit of an injury. I think, you know, he, he made it through the 90s. So, you know, I think he, Arteta's got a little bit of a problem with the back four. But, but I think you're right. I, th- I mean, it's going to be a good game. I mean, obviously, yeah. Arsenal can't afford to go there. And, and not get something. So, you know, I think because of that, it will be a good game. Yeah. Second half goals, guys. West Ham, Man United, Steve. West Ham. Declan Rice, was he rested last night? Him and Suchek? Or were they carrying... Yeah, it's really strange. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it was hard to know whether, you know, they had a little bit of a knock or rested. It's, uh, you know, maybe they just thought, look, it's a bit of a free hit. Uh, I think I, I I heard that there was a little bit of a sickness bug or something that affected them. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, literally on the day, and they lost a few players. They only had; uh, uh, they were a couple short on the bench. They didn't have a; they didn't have a full bench. Oh, there must so, have been a bug. Uh, then, but yeah. I, you know, but if they're back at the weekend, I mean, this is look. They've often they've done quite well in the past against United, yeah. West Ham. Um, you know, they're dangerously close to that that bottom uh, three. They're only four points clear. You know, they're not going to want to, uh, to you know to to give up their uh, their position after sort of clawing themselves out of it a few weeks ago. I think, you know, United are going to have a tough game at Brighton. Yeah. You know, they'll have a tough game at uh, the London Stadium. They'll, they'll certainly be favourites, United, but I think West Ham have got enough about them to hold them. Yeah, I think set pieces are crucial for Man United. If we can defend them, I think we'll be fine. The only thing with West Ham, they're playing the semi-final of the Europa Conference League on Thursday. So maybe that's uh, David Moyes has got one eye on that. But uh, Man United are a hard watch, but I think both teams to score is the way to go. Fulham Leicester, Steve, I've been impressed with your team lately. I know the injuries and everything's going wrong, but I don't like what I see from Leicester. Good going forward, but defensively... It looks like they don't want to defend, Steve. I fancy Fulham of the two. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and I, think, I think it'll be an entertaining game. I mean, as you say, I mean, Leicester's, Leicester obviously can't afford to lose. Yeah. You know, we are, you know, I think some people thought, oh, we're, you know, we're on the beach now. But I think that we put a, we've shown a lot of effort against Man City and certainly against Liverpool last night in the second half. Yeah. So I think, depending on who's available, I think we'll have a go. Uh, and I think it'll be an entertaining game. I think there'll certainly be goals. Yeah. You know, we, we struggle to keep a clean sheet, uh, but as you, but so do Leicester. So w- wouldn't surprise me. There are there are a few goals. You know, Leicester are capable of getting something. Yeah. Uh, and but you know, and they'll have a go. But obviously, you know, I I, I I'm you know I think Fulham fans are quite relaxed at the moment. You know, yeah. sort of whatever result, you know, we're quite happy. So you know, I think we can play with a bit of confidence. And I think that you know it could be an entertaining game. Uh, Definitely will be. Uh, Brighton, Everton, Steve, and what we've seen, 
bright and look good things. I know Everton are fighting for their lives, but, you know, they just can't keep clean sheets. And at the back, they look woeful. And I think Brighton will expose them big time. How do you see it? Well, well, look, again, you know, Brighton, obviously two home games in a row. If they, after tonight, you know, it's a tough game for Everton. They can't afford to drop, you know, to drop too many more points. They did have a go at Leicester. They had enough chances to, yeah. have, to have even done better, you know. Calvert Lewin missed a sitter from like two yards. Uh, I think they they you know, they def- desperately have needed him back. It was a much better performance from Everton, uh, but but again at the back, you know, losing Seamus <laughs> Coleman as well. Yeah. I, I think this is a tricky game for them. If they get anything at all, would be a good result. Yeah, and last but not least, I think this is the game of the weekend, especially at the bottom, Steve. Notts Forest Southampton. This could go any way. As much as I'd like Forest to win and seal Southampton's fate. But I don't think it's as easy, and even money, I think, short. How do you see it going there? Yeah, I mean, look, this is this is certainly last chance solution for, for uh, last chance saloon for Southampton. You know, they're six points adrift. They lose this, they could be uh, with only three games left. You know, they could be almost down. So uh, I think they'll have a real go. You know, Forest at home, we know uh, are tough to beat. Yeah. And uh, after beating Bright, you know, they they're going to look at this Forest and think if we can get a result here. 33 points you know they could pull away from uh, teams yeah. like Leeds or Everton or Leicester yeah. so you know I think uh, you know draw doesn't help it no. probably helps Forest more draw doesn't help Southampton because yeah. they'll still be too far adrift so I think this will be a very entertaining game but you know but the thing with Forest is generally when you know when they've gone ahead they sort of shut up shop a bit but I think Southampton will just keep keep plugging away and they've got goals in the Southampton but yeah. they concede too many so I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, they Southampton hold them but I'm not sure that they'll, they'll get they can get a result they yeah. need I think this has got 2-2 written all over it I back James Ward Price to score any time because he's the main man at 7-2 so but I'd like Forrest to try and get out of it I like Steve Cooper they're unlucky against Bright, uh, Brentford last week but it's not going to be easy being the main game on a Monday. Steve, on to the championship. There was a game last night. Uh, Neil Warnock's Huddersfield, who need a point at home against his old club, Sheffield United. You think they'll get the point? Yeah, I think they came. I mean, Sheffield United are uh, actually a top of the form guide. Uh, yeah. They wins in the last 10. They're promoted. Huddersfield need one point, uh, either from tonight or at the weekend, uh, home to Reading. Yeah. So... Uh, and I think the award, you know, basically will get that point. Uh, if not tonight, then you know, I suspect he'll get all three on at the weekend. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised with Sheffield United already up that um, Huddersfield will get the point they need tonight and stay up, and that will be it done and dusted in at the bottom of the uh, of the championship. Yeah, we were on them last week as our, both our best each way, and I watched it, Steve. They were two up and cruising. I was I was impressed with what I saw. They never looked like losing. I know Cardiff aren't the best, but Huddersfield really did play well, barring the last five minutes when uh, West, uh, when Carter scored and then it was hanging on time. But uh, I expect them to get a point at least tonight. On to the championship. It is the final weekend of the league season. The games are on Monday. All the games are on Monday. They kick off at the same time, unless there is a change. Uh, the first game up, Birmingham City, Sheffield United, Steve. Sheffield United. Well, what do you think? Well, look, Sheffield United, as we know, they're up. You know, whether they take their off it, you know, you, you often get funny results last game of the season. There's nothing much to play for. Birmingham, you know, in front of their home crowd for the last time. You know, they've been, they've had a very inconsistent season. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if United could go there and get a result, but I suspect uh, it may well just be a draw. Yeah, I think Sheffield United will, will, will ease their players or will ease, they'll play the squad players tonight at uh, Huddersfield, do the old manager a nice turn, and then they're going to go there to Birmingham and give them a hiding. I'll wait to see the result tonight, but if they don't win tonight, I'll be all over Sheffield United at 9-10 to 10 on uh, Monday. Steve, Burnley at Cardiff. I, I see that if they win this, if they win, they get, it's over 101 points, I think it is a league total. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll get, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a record by any no. means, but uh, you know, they'll certainly want to be chasing that, and they're going to go there as favourites. But yeah. again, you know, Cardiff uh, are safe, you know, in front of their home crowd, last game of the season. Um, you know, Burnley is certainly, you know, I suspect he'll want to end on a high. So yeah. I think Burnley was rightly starts as favourites. Yeah, I looked at the betting and uh, Burnley to win by more than one goal was even money. Burnley to score uh, over two and a half goals was 14 to 10, but I took seven to two 
Burnley to uh, over two and a half goals and both teams to score, no. I think Burnley are going to destroy them, Steve. My only problem is the last 20 minutes if they get too cavalier and give Cardiff a chance or not. But knowing Vincent Company, he's going to want to win, want to win this, get the 100 points and seal a great season. So Burnley all over for me. And as I say, the key with Huddersfield Reading, you know, if they do have to, they do need a point to stay up, I can see them beating Reading, Steve, but if they get the point tonight, you know, which way would you see it? Would you give Reading a chance, seeing that they're gone already? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, they haven't won in 10. Yeah. They've obviously, a, a, you know, lack of confidence there. I think that Huddersfield, I think, you know, whatever happens tonight, uh, you know, and if they get that point, I think Neil Warnock will, will make sure that they put on a bit of a show. And I, for me, I think that uh, they're going to run out winners, uh, whatever happens uh, tonight. Yeah. I just think that Reading have, you know, I think the six points has really yeah. hurt them, and yeah. especially when it comes quite late in the season. You know, they were looking at the league table at one point thinking, oh, we're a bit clear. All of a sudden, yeah. they get thrust down into the bottom three. So, uh, and, and, and their, their result performances have reflected that. As you say, no win in 10 now. And uh, I think, you know, I, I think if they're not down tonight, they certainly will be by Monday. Yeah, also losing Paul Ince. I can't believe guys could do that. A few games left, get rid of the experienced manager. Anyway, Luton Town at home, Steve. Warming up for the playoffs. Too good for Hull yeah. City? I would think so. You know, Luton have, uh, you know, sh you know, have, have, I think again surprised everybody uh, yeah. by having. Uh, they started slowly this season, but you know, to find themselves in third place uh, and you know with home advantage now, which they didn't have in the uh, in the playoffs last time for yeah. the second leg. I think I think they'll do that. You know, you you would you never quite know. You know whether you think because obviously they can't be caught. They they can't be caught. So whether or not he wants to, he's going to rest one or two. You're just not quite sure, but I yeah. think that they'll start as favourites without doubt. Yeah, I think they're good things to get a result. Steve, my best bit of the weekend is uh, Middlesbrough. I'll call up now against Coventry. They've lost their last two. He's tinkered. I know they had a red card against Rotherham. But if Coventry beat them, that's who they play in the semi final. So I can't imagine yeah. Michael Carrick, you know, playing a weakened team. Steve, 15 to 10. I'm all over, I'm all over Middlesbrough. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah, I think that he certainly won't want to play a weakened team because again, you're sort of playing for positions, and you know who you. But Coventry can't afford to lose this. Yeah. You know they can be caught. So uh, you know I think this will be a good game. You know Coventry have had a good run and got themselves up into that sort of fifth playoff spot, and I think they're going to want to definitely want to keep it. They're not going to want to lose. So you know I think there'll be goals in this. You know Middles have scored a lot of goals at yeah. home in, uh, in in recent matches. I think this will be an entertaining game. Yeah, I just, you know, unbeaten and eight away from home, Coventry. But Middlesbrough, two smacks, and you don't want to go into the playoffs having lost three. But uh, 15 to 10 has had my money already. More wall Blackburn, Steve. Big game for both clubs. Yeah, I, I, I think Millwall will, will get the result they need. I mean, Blackburn had to win the other night. They yeah. didn't. You know, got themselves a latest goal. You know, if you look at the form table, I think they won two in ten, Blackburn. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they dropped away as they did last year. And I'm not sure that they've got uh, enough about them to uh, to get a result and to get themselves into a playoff place now. So I think Millwall will, will win and consolidate their, uh, their sixth place. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Disappointed them on my best bet last week. Couldn't believe it. The effort, they showed effort, but they just lacked a bit of class. And uh, got to agree with Steve Millwall for me. Norwich City, Blackpool. Steve, I watched the Blackpool, uh, was it Luton Town? Millwall game last week. They had a full go of Blackpool, you know. A lot of youngsters, obviously not good enough, but Norwich City have been woeful of late. I think it's one win in ten. There will be goals, Steve, but do you expect Norwich to win? I think Norwich should win, but as you say, they've had a really poor run in. You yeah. know, they, they were on the cusp of a playoff place and they've completely fallen away. And, you know, they're worth their worst season in, in many years. Uh, and you just make sort of wonder what what's going on there because I think a lot of people thought you know they still had a relatively strong squad uh, and could go back up, but uh, they've been found wanting this season. So you know Blackpool got nothing to lose; they'll have a go. But you know I, I just think Norwich should be uh, probably end on a high and be too strong for them. Yeah, my boys pressing against Sunderland. Yeah, we just haven't got enough to get into the playoffs. I actually hope Sunderland do get into the playoffs, Steve. I don't know if I'd take even money, but uh, I think there'd be goals in this one. Which way do you see it? 
Well, I mean, Sunderland have uh, needed to win that game against Watford last week, yeah. and uh, they failed to do so. They got a they got a late point, but I'm not sure even if Sunderland win, that will be enough for them with sort of Millwall and Coventry above them. You know, but I think Sunderland Sunderland has certainly been better away from home in yes. the last uh, ten games or so than they have at home. And uh, I think they'll start as favourites. They'll take uh, huge. There'll be a huge uh, following coming from the northeast. But uh, I think even whatever result they get, I'm not sure it'll be enough. Oh, okay. Well, even though it's my diehard team press, and I hope Sunderland can get into the playoffs. Steve QPR have escaped relegation, especially two great results in the last two weeks at home against Bristol City, who've been disappointing away from home. There's always goals when Bristol City play, but. You fancy QPR, the two teams? Well, look, I mean, a few weeks ago, I think every people were writing QPR off because yeah. of their, you know, was it one win in 17? And all of a sudden, they go to Burnley and win, and then they follow that up uh, with sort of home points and follow that up with a win at Stoke. And, you know, they, they're totally safe and, uh, you know, I think defied the odds. So, you know, they may now sort of the pressure's off them. They may well put in a, the sort of performance at home they haven't been. Bristol yeah. City have been very inconsistent. You know, at home they've been strong, but as you say, away, uh, not so. I wouldn't be at all surprised QPR could get a result now that they are safe and the pressure's off. OK, Steve, I can't believe the betting and this. This is my best value bet of the weekend. Swansea City, 21 to 10 at home against West Brom. You know, I've watched some Swansea, they're decent side. West Brom have... You know, I know they're on the edge of the playoffs, but I don't like what I've seen lately. I fancy Swansea, the two teams. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I saw that, I thought, that, that can't be right. You know, on, on the basis that West Brom are still just about in with a shout of a yeah. playoff place, but I, I, I think that's, that's, that's gone. But Swansea are one of the most informed teams. Yeah. And, you know, I think for them, the season is ending just a few games too short because another few games, and I think that they could have got the playoff place. So for me, uh, I think we, I think here we, you know, we're agreeing again because I, 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 I fancy that as my value bet. Yeah, that's six to ten, win and draw. I just couldn't believe that. Uh, two games to go in the champion, Steve. Watford Stoke. And your brother be happy when you see him over the weekend? Well, oh, you know, I think Watford uh, fans are very disappointed with the way the season's turned out. Yeah. Uh, start, you know, obviously, you know, I had hope that they might uh, be challenging this year and they've, they've been found wanting. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a clear out. Yeah, Pedro has evidently uh, been earmarked to go to Brighton. Okay. It's another South American there, but uh, I think they'll be too strong. Stoke, Stoke have had a very poor end to the season. They picked yeah. up a, a couple of months, excuse me, a couple of months ago, and it's all just gone to pot. And I think yeah. Watford will finish on a high, uh, but that will be too little, too late yeah, for they, them, really. Yeah, they cost me money, Stoke. They, I didn't go against them when they beat uh, Blackburn three-two, but every time I followed them, they've sold me down the river. And last but not least, Steve, Wigan Athletic, who are relegated against a Rotherham team. You escaped relegation last week. How do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously both uh, Wigan are down, Rotherham are safe. I think Wigan have shown a lot, lot of fights in, yeah. in the last few months. They were just too far adrift. But I think, I think, for me, wouldn't be at all surprised if I, mean, I think there'll be goals because, yeah. say, both teams can relax now. But I think Wigan are capable of winning this. Uh, Rotherham surprised me. I think they've done a lot better. You know, I think a lot of people had them in their bottom three, yeah. and uh, you know they've done well, particularly at home. I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Wigan might end on a high, just to sort of show that uh, if they can keep uh, the squad together, they'll be challenging next season in League One. Well, let's hope so. Steve, pressure time again. I know who your value bet is, like mine at Swansea yeah. City, but who's your best bet? Yeah, I'm sort of fair. I'm going to go for Huddersfield. I just think. Neil Warnock is going to want to end uh, his short reign on a high. I'm not sure whether or not he, you know he wants to stay uh, next season or they want him next season. But yeah. you know he's he's done exactly what they brought him in to do, and uh, they've done it. You know I think they'll end up being quite a few points clear of the bottom three, and, and uh, he's deser he'll deserve his uh, end of season bonus. Yeah. No, I totally agree. He has done a great job and they're well organised, Steve. I was really impressed with what I saw against them against Cardiff City last week. Steve, as always, thanks again and we'll speak over the weekend. Yeah. All the best, Have a good Steve. one. Cheers, Budge. Thank you. So, UK correspondent Stevie Bram. We go on to the uh, Nedbank Cup semi-finals. Massive games, but there were several league games. 
on I watched quite a few of them. Uh, Tuesday night, Supersport nil, Stellenbosch nil. Last night, Pirates conceded an injury time when drawing one all with Royal AM. And I watched Maritzburg 2, Maruma Gallants 2. Shame for Maritzburg, conceding late. Maruma Gallants, my mate Dylan's curse side, well organised. It was actually an excellent game. Sekakuna United conceded a last minute penalty when drawing one all with TS Galaxy. Amazulu came from 2 0 down to draw with league leaders Mamelodi Sundowns. I fancied Cape Town City to beat Golden Arrows, but that didn't work out. They drew 0-0 in a massive game at the bottom of the league. Richards Bay were 2-0 up, but conceded three goals and losing 3-2 to Chipper United. Our league standings, Maruma Gallants, who are 14, 29 points, minus 3. Chipper United, 29 points, minus 11. And unfortunately, KZN Adford, Maritzburg United, 26 points, minus 17. They still have sundowns to play, so it's not looking good for our boys from the capital. On to the semi-final of the Ned Bank Cup, and two superb games to look forward to. Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates. I'm all over Pirates on performance, but the last five meetings outside the Black Label Cup, Kaiser Chiefs have won all five. There'll be a full house at the FNB Soccer City on Saturday. I'll be watching it. 17 to 10 Orlando Pirates is for me. I'm hoping it's a goal fest. I think we saw 11 to 10 both teams to score. But I fancy Orlando Pirates of the two teams. And I also like Stellenbosch. At home at Donny Craven Stadium. Hard to beat. They've won four and drawn one of the last five. Sekakuna struggle away from home. Their last five away league games. One draw and four defeats, and they haven't scored a goal. Under two and a half goals is the best way to go in that particular clash. But if you want to go outright, I'm on to Stellenbosch. On to our weekend exotics, and it's all on Saturday this weekend. And our score six, I'm going Bournemouth, win and draw against Chelsea. I'm bankering Man City to beat Leeds United. Tottenham Hotspur, win and draw at home against Crystal Palace. I'm going Aston Villa to avoid defeat at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Inter Milan, win and draw at Jose Mourinho's Roma. And I'm throwing the draw in with Liverpool at home at Anfield against Brentford, 192. On to other soccer six, I'm going AC Milan, win and draw against Lazio. Orlando Pirates, win and draw against Kaiser Chiefs. RB Leipzig, win and draw at Freiburg. Bournemouth, win and draw at home against Chelsea. Tottenham win and draw at home against Crystal Palace. And I'm chancing Aston Villa to be too good for Wolverhampton Wanderers, 192. On to our score 10 on Saturday. I'm going the field in the Bournemouth versus Chelsea clash. Man City to be too good at home against Leeds United. Tottenham win and draw at home against Crystal Palace. Siding with Aston Villa to avoid defeat at Wolves. Inter Milan to avoid defeat at Roma. On to the second page, Union St. Gloire. Win and draw at Club Bruges. The field in the Liverpool-Brentford match, looking for the upset. And ending up with three bankers. Bayern Munich to beat Werder Bremen. Ajax Amsterdam to beat AZ Alkmaar. And Real Madrid to beat Osasuna in the Spanish Cup final, 288. On to our soccer 13. I'm going Liverpool, win and draw against Brentford. Man City to be too good at home against Leeds. Bournemouth, win and draw at home against Chelsea. As well as Tottenham Hotspur. Win and draw at home against Crystal Palace. I'm siding with Aston Villa to win at Wolves. Inter Milan to avoid defeat at Roma. Bayern Munich should be too good away at Werder Bremen. On to the second page. Real Madrid to be too strong for Osasuna. Marseille to avoid defeat in the second and third clash against Lens. Siding with Nice. Win and draw at home against Rennes. I think AX Amsterdam will beat AZ Alkmaar. Going for Union saint Gulois. Win and draw at Club Bruges. And ending up with Benfica to be too strong at home against Sporting Braga, 2.56. On to our budgies bets for the weekend. I'm going Bournemouth plus one handicap against Chelsea. That's Bournemouth win or draw. Over two and a half goals. Both teams to score no in the Man City versus Leeds United game. And both teams to score in the second half in the Newcastle versus Arsenal fixture, 2,600 to 200. I'm going over two and a half goals, both teams to score yes in the Wolves Aston Villa, Fulham Leicester, and Notts Forest versus Southampton matches, 2,000 to 200. On to the championship on Monday. Apologies, I haven't any time. Goal scorer double. I'm going Son Hyung Min of Spurs and James Moore Prowse of Southampton to score any time. 
It's a nice double, 11 to 1, 2,200 to 200. Our championship treble, I'm going over two and a half goals, both teams to score no in the Burnley Cardiff City game. Middlesbrough to be too good for Coventry, and I'm going Swansea, handicap plus one goal against West Brom, 3,700 to 200. There's no games in Spain, so I'm going to chance an Italian quartet. I'm going Salernitana, plus one handicap against Empoli. I think Sassuolo will be too good for Bologna. And over two and a half goals in the Torino AC Monza and Udinese Sampdoria fixtures, 3,000 to 200. And I call us King, six or Nixa. I'm going Man City to beat Leeds, Burnley to beat Cardiff. Middlesbrough to beat Coventry, Bayern Munich to beat Werder Bremen, Real Sociedad to beat Osasuna, and Udinese to beat Sampdoria, 2,100 to 200. For the guys left in the last one standing, please, Saturday lunchtime is closing time, and for everyone else, please remember to stay on side.